And so we begin. Let's get it going, everybody. It is Sandhawk, the PUBG Mobile World Invitational All-Star Group Stage. Day number two has begun. Players have popped out the plane. Of course, we're seeing gladiators go to the Camp Alpha side of the island. And my eyes are locked onto boot camp right now. It looks like we got a little hot crap situation. Surprise, surprise. Let's see how it goes down here. As for a lot of teams, for, well, for teams that drop on a boot camp here, when the hot drop goes down, generally you want to be close to lobster or in lobster when this fight occurs. This is obviously a very hot topic here. You get that loot fast, get those DBSs on the board and go smoothing. Oh, it's going to be an all out war right now. You can see uh, Bigatron right there below them. And I'll tell you what, if this fight goes on for just a little too long, they're going to come and hit that third party real quick. I mean, Galacticos as well is in a great spot to potentially kind of assault that location. You're kind of scrap looting, so it's not exactly the easiest position too. But I mean, even a Pyanan team like Atom, for example, who is going to be hunting points today is on uh -oh. it, but it's going to be D plus Kia taking the first losses here as Fabian's already down. Oh, and that's going to be a clean elimination for them. So FaZe is going to have the man advantage. Let's see how D plus Kia is going to handle this situation. They got to keep calm, collected, and they really need an initial knock things here to, to even it out. And from their position, it's going to be really hard to get. Definitely so. Definitely here. A few nades in hand mean that a hot drop situation like this gets a little bit precarious through the window. Not going to be able to oh! hit. Oh, never mind. Satan falls. And with two knocked. That's a full-on push, baby. It's coming in hot. You know it. Yeah. Can, but they're still taking it very carefully. Uh-oh. Now, we did see a return knock there with a nice angle. It'd be from Osel. I'm going to say, I'm glad he has an S12K because in his hands previously was with VSS. And uh, I'm going to be honest, that's not the greatest weapon in that situation. So yeah. the S12K will come in handy. Absolutely, and this <laughs> that knocked really just helped them buy some more time. Here he's going again. He does have that S12K. Oh, oh the pre-fire. DBS. Absolutely disgusting. DBS coming in hot, and D plus Kia. Oh, uh, it's pretty much it, done and dusted. What could Forrest do at this point? If you're Forrest, you somehow have to bail. Like, you're just going to get destroyed oh. here, and he will go down. That's D plus Kia. Finish off to start things here in the game. Now, that is BTR slowly encroaching on this position, but they're not fully committing to it. There was two southwest of them. The other two, though, they're at trifecta, and so we, they're safe. And we talked about this earlier, right? When you have those yep. kind of fights, you got to do it quickly. Yes. And uh, all right. Oh, the circle. The circle has <laughs> popped. Uh, hopefully, we can kind of get a look at the map feed here in a second so you can see exactly where it's going. And uh, just for you guys to guess, there's one team right now screaming in the air with joy. And uh, what do you think that is? I'm going to go with gladiators, perhaps, <laughs> as we take a look at the replay of this. And unfortunately, Alpha 7 already having one knock Revo going down. That's really going to hinder their campaign as they'll be wanting to approach rapidly because a circle like this far west coming in from Kampong, coming in from Lakawi and these locations, it's going to take a while. And then there'll be a barrier to entry for teams holding you out. Yeah, with this first zone, I'm surprised to see Vampire taking so long to rotate uh, up like they did yesterday. Mm. And uh, I know you guys can't see it, but Young and Galactic will seem to have got a little bit of ahead of them and might just beat them to their spot. So that's going to be interesting to take a look at here. And we're starting to see teams already swim. They want to get to that island as fast as possible. I mean, Galacticos was blitzing north of Vampire. I mean, they, they had that quarry split. You can see them here. Now you can see Vampire is moving towards the bridge quite quickly. And Galacticos has had to pitch up in some of the compounds. There's, there's also iCurd in this area as well, uh, trying to kind of zoom on past all of this. But you got to be very careful when you make these moves as Galacticos is going to go for the spray, oh. but will be knocked. What a shot there. Ikert Esports still with their full team up, playing it very tight right now, looking to take advantage of Yangong. The problem with all of that is that knock was by Ravenclaw from Vampires. So it was multiple people looking at the Galacticos where they are. They've kind of got themselves in a bit of a bind here position-wise because the bridge gives you kind of overlook over this. That's why they're still on the bridge looking at it, as you can see here on the right-hand side. Now they're moving away. They think, okay, that knock's enough. We know another team is there. We don't want to be the third-party victim. You could definitely tell that these teams did their homework last night. I mean, mm. we see so many squads so fast on the rotation. They realize position is everything. And we're going to see Trick not able to make it out of the water. So even though they're moving quickly, it's not an easy task, that's for sure. 
Slight adaptation from Gladiators on this Northwest Island as well is Kitsune has been in Camp Alpha for a little bit longer than our previous Sandhawk. So I could only assume maybe looking for a few more supplies than they had in the previous game because we all know from the previous Sandhawk they were running out of ammo swiftly by the end of it. And my question and, and what I'm really wondering and you guys in the chat, what do you guys think about this? Because, you know, they like to take that high ground position, yeah, yeah. but we still saw them hold that DBS, right? That was taking a lot of space in their bags, but they didn't even get a chance to really use it. So do you think that they're supposed to still pick that up just in case a team pushes on them? We were, we, I was talking about this with the other boys yesterday uh, at the end of the day, but I feel like two at the bottom, uh, south side of this hill can hold DBSs because that's the most likely place to be having a breach happen when it comes to this hill. Two at the top, maybe kind of forego it a little bit, try and kind sure. of prioritize some more long range stuff. Because usually, it's very rare you would see a breach from the north side of this hill. It's so open, so difficult to make happen. Yeah, even a UMP would be disgusting at this point because uh, even though it's a little bit tough to get those long shots, that bullet speed being a little bit slower, but they're also silent. So even mm. if you're able to hit a couple players, they're not going to really know which direction it came from. Definitely, as we have to take stock of what's going on here. Alpha 7 and coming in late. They're up against Sem 9 at the moment, who have kind of found them on rotation a little bit. Uh, they're currently just north of cave location. So, and, oh dear me, oh, Silas, Silas, why you knocked yourself, mate? Uh, maybe he didn't have his mountain climbing shoes on. Well, that's gotta something. Hurt. Fell out of a car, maybe? Who knows? Yeah, <laughs> popped out just a little bit too quick. And you know what, speaking of hop out, you can see or hop on, Sim 9 looks like they're on the, the mopeds on a couple bikes as well. Looking to get this rotation going and right on time because Alpha 7 was right behind them. And as we see uh, FaZe throwing a, throwing a nade at a teammate. What do you think about that? They Bold are, strategy. yeah, very, I'm not sure what happened. <laughs> we, <laughs> obviously we've not checked in with them, but they're still over by boot camp. This is quite a slow move here. As we take a look at the circle, take stock of where these teams are. They are frozen for the moment here, just kind of holding onto this position. I guess maybe they thought teams might come in against them from the east side, but that's not to be the case. That's a huge shift. Yeah, I think the second they saw that zone, they should have just took off from boot camp, grabbed those four eliminations and got across that water. But Bigatron beat them to it, and now they're going to be gate kept like crazy in this situation. Now, this is a super interesting case study because this is so dissimilar, not, not too dissimilar at all from our previous Sandhawk. So, Vampire will be moving up that west coast on this island. Will anybody use that information to their advantage to maybe try and punish them wherever they may be? Looks like Galacticus is going much deeper than they previously did as we jump on with Aton who's taking some shots. That's a great point. I mean, if anybody did their homework last night, I mean, this is the exact same circle that we saw. Basically. So you should have a good idea where most of these teams are going to head. We're starting to see that feed light up right now as R8 are seem to be pressured by both Bigatron and S2G. That's two teams you really don't want on you. Bigatron going in deep as well, up in that northwest side here. So Could let's be cutting see cutting off Vampire. Maybe, maybe. Also S2G trying to go for that too. A few shots will head over their way as Yuhai will try and pepper them down here with the M4. Not really hitting too much, but Kelsey's got to get take over. S2G going to hold these buildings right next to Bigatron. So they're going to be neighbors for now. This circle is pretty wide, so I wonder if they decide to kind of just have a little momentary truce, share the spot for now, or if they get a knock, they're actually going to push it. Whilst that was going on, Ferrari hit an unbelievable car 98 shot from Hartin all Ooh. the way on to Gladiators, which is quite the distance. So Gladiators here, I mean, they're obviously, people know that they're present on that hill, and they always will be. But the fact that they're taking those trades, Gladiators got to be careful about that usual 1-1-1-1 one, 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 one split that they do. Yeah, I mean, in that scenario, if you get knocked, it's going to be really hard to get picked up. So you want to be split, but at least close enough where you get knocked, you're able to get that rest. See that shot? Wow! <laughs> out the car! That was nice. That was nice. That was disgusting. That is what, that's how you get it done right there. I'm telling you, these rotations, they know what's at risk because it's so easy to blow up yeah. those vehicles. But hitting shots like that, I mean, it's got to feel good. All right. So as this circle is folded down, if Vampire gets the same level of success as they did in the previous Sandhawk, mm. I'd be surprised because there are a lot more teams now committed to that west side here on this island. It's going to be a lot harder for them to have freedom of movement here. And this is what I was talking about before. 
Teams yesterday looked more cautious than they do right now in this game. People know what they want to do in this circle because they've played it basically before. Yes. And now they're going to be looking for those center positions more ferociously. And honestly, this was the perfect start to day number two here because if those teams still had any nerves, right, they know what to do in this zone. So that's going to definitely help them out. There's no surprises so far. Uh, unfortunately for Mazexis, they did take off a little bit early. They did lose three players, so mm -hmm. they're going to be stuck with one. E plus Kia obviously taken out. Still a lot of players alive. But here we go. Let's see Alpha 7. Mafioso getting caught slipping. And Tena Dexa as well. So now Alpha Ooh. 7 having a terrible start here to day two. Blade looking good here for Eigen I8. As we see Carrillo trying to charge up and good to go against Blade. Did actually catch him a little bit with that nade, but not getting the full knock to start things off. There's going to be reinforcements coming, and uh, I think Carrillo here is going to have a very hard time shutting this down. 100%. You can see Carrillo looking for that right side peak advantage. All these players are oh. right-handed. He hits one. Kuchuk. Kuchuk. Oh, my. Two. One no. more. Oh, goes for the thirst. He knows where the third player is, but he just secures the points. No. And he has the advantage. Carrillo, he's pissed, and he's wanting more. Goes for the molly as well. That actually fire will spread quite closely. And oh, he got him. him! Oh my oh god! My god. What a play! What a play coming in from Carrillo! 1v3! Huge! Carrillo is on fire! That play alone, even though they had such a difficult start, if there's anything that's gonna hype your team up and get ready for the day, it's that right there. That was massive. I mean, the DBS enables a little bit of that because it's so powerful, but Carrillo, the way he was using it, the way he was getting those shots off, and the wherewithal to just go for the molly after, brilliant stuff. What a play. That's my play of the tournament so far, I've got to be honest. Absolutely. <laughs> Same way here, and I'll tell you what, as much as it's so hype for Alpha 7, oh, man, for Aegon I8, that's got to hurt big time. Definitely, definitely. They should have been able to shut that down. You don't give an opponent three 1v1s. You push at the same time in order to be able to dislodge him when you've got the man advantage. But anyway, let's move our attention elsewhere. Phase on the edge of the circle, down towards the south, trying to hold on off, but Atom with some long range shots. Oh man, and, at, and Phase, they have five eliminations, the most in the lobby so far, so they're definitely feeling good, but with two players knocked, it's starting to get a little bit too close for comfort. Let's see if Mormon can go ahead and throw these smokes out. Get his team up, but man, that cross is going to be so deadly. Oh, but from the back, he's getting shot as well, and he is going to go down, so it's only one player up left for face. They're totally sandwiched in all of this here, Hot Jukes. I, <laughs> likewise, I said, I don't know how you get out of that, but face, I really don't know how you get out of this one. <laughs> this one's tough. Then Auras, hey, got to hit those. That's the only way, and, and, then, he gets hit. and then he gets hit, <laughs> yeah. So FaZe Clan uh, out early here in match number two. Let's see it again. Yeah, yeah, of course. Oh, ooh. One more. Oh, I like the fact that he actually had the heads up play to go for those thirsts, eliminate those sight lines for him to throw that Molotov just money in the bank. You're absolutely right. Leaves Blade blind, which is very, very important here. And a molly like this on that wooden floor, hey, man, it's uh, stuff for Blade to get away from. <laughs> oh, man, that one is going to hurt. Well... Hopefully we can see them bounce back later on, but there's still a lot of action here, and that is gonna be Carrillo finally out there, but hey, you're gonna go out, that's how you do it, it's yep. style. Yep, brilliant stuff. Almost 500 damage off the back of that here, really kind of saving a, a few points here for Alpha 7's Bacon. It was a salvage mission, all things considered. Now we're getting on board with Kitsune, who has, look at that, ammo count. Oh my gosh. 350 shots for the M4 here. Still rocking the DBS, but this is way more supplies that they're gonna be working with compared to that game one this, earlier. This is what I love to see. I love to see teams adapt, right? Just see that this didn't work too good before, but they made some changes early on. Let's take a look here. At as this next circle is about to pop, you know that Gladiators are hoping that it centers right on top of them. Mm. And it's going to be a quick battle here for Vampire because they oh. are right on the edge. All right. Now the question is, is what does Gladiators do with their split? Because this is way too much against way too many teams on a hill like this. It's a great position of power, yes. However, you're going to have crunch down soon in this game. How are you going to adapt to that? Absolutely. And which hill which mountain do you decide to take there's so many different angles we'll see how gladiators decides to handle this out as we see a lot of teams going out to pop a blue there's only 30 seconds left on the clock they're gonna have to get moving quickly i love to see vampire hugging that zone going all the way to the south side but there's drs i cured waiting for them 
they're playing it very patiently, but again, they're going to be uh, unfortunately hurt by the fact that there are so many teams that also made those adaptations heading towards that west side. Tony K looking for a bit of information here. They're very huddled. We can see them a little bit closer compared to previous games. They know that coming into day two here, these teams have been able to kind of crunch the numbers a little bit and make it harder for them to make these moves. Oh, let's take a look to see how Vampire, they're having a difficult go at it with this rotation. Oh, picks his teammate nice, up nice. and brings them inside the building. That is a really nice play right there. And they are on the edge of the circle, so they are going to have a little bit more time as well. Looking at the center of the zone, Gladiators. Looks like Tixie is going to meet up with Matic all yep. the way at the north side because they know there's people coming that way. Killer getting oh, the shot. shot. And uh, when you're riding the bike around here on Sandhawk, sometimes it do be that way. Do be like that. Do be like that. That is a fact. Let's take a look here at the rest of the teams and squads here. Icurd, right? Looking to make a big bounce back today. They want to put those points on the board. They're in 13th place right mm. now. And this is a really important time for those teams in the center of the leaderboard. Rays going down as we see Yokohama Donuts in full on snake mode. Yep, tough for them. Likewise, a few other players here trying to go for the snake. Ragnarok is very split from SK Tom, for example, here for R8. So he's kind of mixed himself up in all of that hillside, trying to just play things out. But Aton will go down, unfortunately, for them uh, in 13th place. 12 teams remaining. Uh, Mazexis with one player up, R8 with two. S2G rocking a duo as well. And here comes the blue zone coming in hot. This is right on the edge of Cap Alpha. Let's see if Silas can catch a couple players off guard, but he's not going to have a lot of time to do so. You can see him barely getting that first aid off. 17 seconds left on the clock. This is the calm before the, so the storm. And I'll tell you what, fifth circle is that storm. Definitely so. Where are we going? I'm going to go high ground. High ground. High ground. Come on. Take it to the high ground, baby. That'll make it interesting. And I'll tell you what, it's going to center on up. Oh, okay. okay. It's going to center on up. You know, that's going to be a pretty easy rotation for Icurd. Uh, DRS is right there as well, though. That's going to make things interesting. And uh, for Vampire, uh, uh, they have actually a wide open valley to be able to get to their next spot. So they should utilize it pretty quickly. Uh, as quickly as they can here. But sending it through some of these teams will be very, very difficult. BTR as well as Infinity kind of caught in a, a turmoil here down in these compounds. Very close range. Not too many DBSs on action here. It's going to be Umps versus Umps. And already the trade going up against BTR. Infinity able to shut it down. But here comes the S12K to try and shut the rest of all of this down. Trying to peek on around. You need to go for the pre-fire here. Tries to go for it as it's coming around the corner, but not able to get the confirm just yet. Betsu getting oh. it done at the last second, and that is going to be Bigatron. Red Villains out in 11th place. Huge heads-up play there from Bensu. A very important place to win out on here, but now they're kind of wounded. It's going to be Galacticos, maybe trying to encroach on this territory eventually. This needs to be a point where you either decide, okay, are we going to try and scale the mountain here, oh! or are we going to sit in the low ground? They're like crashing in. They're coming on in here a little bit later than I think they would have liked, but they, we could definitely see a play come out if they're if it's Loki is able to get Bensu. Can he do it? Oh, now here comes the nades, the utility coming on hot. He has to breach. He gets one. He gets two. No. Betsu on fire. An absolute disaster for Galacticos. And it doesn't help the fact that Vampire was also shooting down from the high ground here to be able to help that out. If you're going to make that crash happen, you need to get into the buildings fast and cause the problems quickly. But it's not to be the case. Players dropping like crazy. Half the lobby is gone just in a snap like that. Six teams still remaining. And it is all about the high ground here. You can see Mekyu watching over everybody, looking to sneak some eliminations. Yeah, Mekyu and Kitsune are trying to create the hot gates here for Falcons to try and get up through. And I don't know whether or not Falcons are going to be able to do it. At the same time, Ravenclaw dropped and kind of caught a little bit here by DRS oh on gosh. just a tree alone. Still surviving, though. I'm surprised he even survived actually peeking that with a Molotov, but he did buy some time. He got a crate, and that is perfect timing for him. Going to pick up that level three gear, Very but important. it is him all by himself. Very important. Shifts down towards Icurd here. There's an opportunity here for them to be able to rise up the ranks swiftly. Shots come in here from the back of this crate. There's not much cover at all. Peek has advantage. Oh. Very much going to rules as he will be able to take that ah. out. That's him shutting it down. Vampires are gone. DRS, yeah, clutching it up right there. So now their backs are pretty clear for the time being as they try to scale this hillside. We do have a southern circle here. That's going to definitely make things interesting. Gladiators, five eliminations so far. This is their zone. This is what they hope for, right? They need to rack up as mm. many points as they possibly can right now. DRS can try and encroach on this territory. 
throw in some mollies as well as throwables up there. Kind of haphazardly though, almost. I They have a lot of value in the late game. So to throw them up there, hoping it's going to kind of mm. hit something without too much information, not the biggest fan of it. That's that game sense, baby. That's that game sense. You just got to have that yeah, little paranoia so? just saying, hey, you know what? Maybe, but you're right. They are much more valuable in that late game. So we'll see. Right? If it's towards that end, he's going to wishing he still held on to it. As we're going to see Delta throw a Molotov right Ooh. on top of Ali. He's burning and barely able to make it out of there. And that's the information you need. When you have line of sight of something, you can be more sure about it connecting the way you want it to. As it's on one HP. Can we please be cautious? <laughs> not a, not <laughs> a first aid in sight, and that is going to hurt. Perfectly cooked nade there from Delta. He's got that DBS ready. Uh, but he definitely knows that there is that off angle held by Ali. So For he sure. has that intel, doesn't want to make a mistake here and push out. You know, oh, 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 that shot right there. He's going to shut it down. Here comes the push on the A ram. Can he hold it down? He can't. From his perspective, he if he was hard holding the left angle and wasn't ready for the right angle, that's unfortunate there for iCurd. Considering they had such a good compound, DRS has been able to breach this strongly. Now, here's the problem. Gladiators is the dragon waiting in the wings. This is their territory. Will DRS be able to hold them off to secure the victory? Yeah, and they're pretty split up right now, so it's going to be pretty tough for Gladiators to do so, not to mention they lost one player. I got to give a huge shout out to Infinity IQ, right? Uh, they do have seven eliminations, and they still managed to survive and get some good placement points from here. So a really big heads-up play for them. Definitely. Nades go forwards here from Tixie. He's not working with a huge amount of util, just one smoke and one molly left. Uh, and again, now they're working at a man disadvantage. They did want lose one earlier uh, as Meku was going down. Rules OG on that off angle. That is going to be huge for his mm. squad. You can see he's trying to get that intel, those sight lines. But, you know, looking over here, we see Tixie with that high ground. The next zone does pop, and it is dead center on a DRS. Also, unfortunately for Gladiators, the one snake remaining. He's on the low ground, but he is on their side of the circle. You can see him crawling at the bottom <laughs> there, just at the very edge. But, yes, you identified it perfectly, Hot Jukes. The off angle from Rules. Right now... Gladiators is anticipating only the compound being taken. Also, Killer's spot is like a landmine. It's like a trap set for them whilst they push up into this area. He might have seen his head just then. Uh-oh. Yes, he spotted him. I think he might have seen him. Yep. Killer YT all the way up front here. Tixie with his last grenade. Oh, the bounce! No! The bank is open, baby! And Killer YT going what? down here is going to make things that much more interesting. The fight has even. Tixie pushing up with the DBS. The jump down from Delta. It finally hits the shot right when it needs to happen. Very important here, however, he's given up a little bit of that high ground. Now Gladiators might try and strike here through the smoke to use the high ground. It's going to apply a little bit of time, but it's not going to be enough here. Kitsune also goes down. That's going to be DRS here looking to sweep in, finish off Matic, and get themselves the victory. Gante pushing up Matic. The man advantage is too strong, and Gladiators go out. Infinity IQ, uh, second. second place, just like that. That's why you never give up, even as a solo here. Going to charge up for the nade, but they knew where he was with the molly. I think another one, oh, it just went flying past him as they're going to go on the hunt here, finish off IQ, and that is going to be DRS. What a victory for them coming in to game number one of day two. So huge. DRS Gaming clutching it up, and they did it in spectacular fashion. Double-digit elimination points for them. They did what gladiators were wishing they could do here at the start of the day.